Am I up to no good? Have I finally gone mad? <laughs> Maybe so. Resurrection of the sleeping beast. All four tires skidding and seized. Oh no, the back one's turning. Well. Let's see what we've discovered. Treasures of dust and spiders. <laughs> On a cold winter's day in January. There's a bunch of interesting features in this go-kart which people who know me for a long time are very aware of which I'll keep secret till later. Like you never imagined. You know how crazy I am today. Well I was more crazy back then when I was manic. <laughs> Everybody called this the beast. I just dug out the key from stuff under the seat. It was still there after all those years. Spider webs and all. It's the ignition from a 1963 Ford Falcon. But back in 1977 when I made this thing, that wasn't a very old junk car to find in the auto records. Ooh, look at that. Still works. There was a headlight button horn button. These two positive and negative ports were for hooking a booster cable setup I made for it in case the battery went dead. Light telling me that stuff was turned on. The motorcycle battery went in this box. Um, no, it's not in there anymore. Look at all that interesting wiring I did way back then. That was my expertise. It's got vibration dampeners in the steering shaft, upper and lower. I made a special little pickup that works off the axle with exactly the right calculated ratio to make that speedometer work, but <laughs> that's destroyed now. I custom cut on an indexing head on a milling machine my own gears. See this one, I didn't even bother cutting the teeth all the way around. It wasn't necessary to give it a bit of ratio in the steering. I made every single part, every pedal, I made the tie rod ends, I made the spindles, of course the frame, everything. I had no money back then when I was a kid. I hand formed and curved all that metal just in a vise on the workbench heating it red hot with a torch. You know, made the axle myself too. I only, there isn't much stuff I didn't make. You can even barely see welded on pieces of rusty metal which are wheel balance weights I did. I even custom wheel balance those wheels because this thing goes so fast. When I made this thing back in 1977 in high school, the motor I used being a Honda, something like a CB450, I can't remember the exact call name, but it was called the Hellcat engine because they had two versions of that engine back then. This was the race version. It had, it was, it had uh, dual overhead cams, back then only two valves per cylinder, but it was probably the most advanced motorcycle four-stroke engine there was at that time. Its red line was 10,500. It didn't even use valve springs. It used torsion bars to lift the valves up and keep them held up instead of springs. A pair of Keyhin constant velocity carburetors. You can see the camshaft covers. 
five speeds point to condenser ignition so the points are probably going to need sanded to get spark again back in its day that engine on the bike would beat almost any other four-stroke motorcycle on the road even most 750s it was awesome it revs so quick it's unbelievable top speed of this machine is 110 miles per hour and the claimed ET quarter mile on the bike that that engine came off of was around 13.7 in the quarters damn good back then from just a 450 cc to make the brakes I took the rear drum off of an old Toyota rear wheel drive car and I machined it all out and built a hub for it so it would fit on that one inch axle made a solid steel backing plate and used the original Toyota you know, brake shoes. Now it's just hooked up to a lever system with a actuating cam instead of hydraulic. Back when I made that thing it cost me four hundred and fifty dollars to make. The only thing I bought was the motor for a hundred and fifty, the tires, the bearings, and a few miscellaneous things like the covering for the seat and a couple other little bearings and stuff. Every other part was just the cost of materials from school, and school did make me pay for the materials, which was just steel, because every other part was handmade. I didn't have enough money to spend $75 for each spindle, and $32 for each tie rod end, and all those other things, and bearing mount plates, and so on and so on. Oh yeah, I did have to buy the chain and sprockets. I could have made the sprockets, but it's cheaper to buy them. Well, easier. There's the throttle cable, and I even had one new other little feature no one else had. When you started it, well of course that throttle cable connected to a steel rod that went to the pedal, but to make it run so it wouldn't stall when you started it, you push this thing down, that would actuate this little thing a little bit, and it would put it on fast idle. You could just, while you were driving, reach over and set it back to normal idle speed, or anything in between if you wanted to. can't believe that still works. These two posts on the back are mounts for a basket thing which I still have that stuck out over the exhaust where I could put actually over 200 pounds of weight in because I was a garbage picker when I was cruising around in this thing if I saw a car battery in the garbage or a lawnmower or a small appliance or a TV I picked it up threw it in there strapped it down and drove home and it even gave me better wheelies yeehaw now I just gotta decide if I wanna get it running again and, and restore it too <laughs> sure is rusty. Looks like it needs a new floor.